I like to apologize in advance for having more uh, shaky handheld footage in this video than usual. There's a lot of things I wanted to capture that I just couldn't really get the angle I wanted with a tripod, so. But uh, it's not too bad, so hope you enjoyed the video. This, my friends, is a Commodore DPS 1101 Daisy Wheel printer. And uh, yeah, yesterday I made a short about this, talking about how it's like the world's noisiest printer. And I figured I'd make a little bit more of an in-depth video on it. So there's some things I wanted to say in that video that I couldn't say because it was a short and I only had so much time. But I want to do a bit more of an in-depth video on it. So uh, here we are. I picked this up for free from somebody in a local computer group, and uh, it's a pretty big honkin' uh, printer here. Something cool about this printer is that it works. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how frustratingly unreliable printers in general can be. And uh, yeah, this thing, even though it's pushing almost 40 years old, it still works just fine. And yes, I do believe this thing is from around 1984. So uh, this thing is uh, going against the printer stereotype by actually working. And of course, there's no planned obsolescence garbage on this printer. And yeah, as I said, this is a daisy wheel printer. So this little wheel here, each of these little tips on the wheel have a letter on them. And this little thing is a hammer. And it pushes the little tips on the wheel into the paper, which would be here. I don't have any paper in it right now. And it pushes it through this little ink ribbon and it stamps the letters onto the paper. And the wheel rotates to select the letter. So. One well, of the limitations of the style of printer is that you can only print basically a single size of letter and only characters that are on the uh, wheel. Whereas with a dot matrix printer, you can do like custom, you can print like graphics and stuff in different font sizes. Over here, there are some buttons for the line spacing as well as pause and form feed. And here's the back of this printer. This is a Commodore IEC printer. That means it connects over the Commodore IEC serial bus. And it's got the in and out, since you can uh, daisy chain IEC devices. And then on the other side, there's the power switch and the power connector. And here's the label with the serial number and whatnot. Made in Japan. So let's power this beast on so I can demo it. There's a power switch back here. It does a little thing, it rotates you, uh, position it correctly so it knows which character it's on. Now let's load some paper into it. So in order to communicate with the printer, we're going to need to open up a connection between basic and device number four on the IEC chain, which is what the printer defaults to. So we're gonna go open four comma four, that'll open a connection between basic and device four on the IEC. Then we can use the print number command, which is a bit different than the regular print command. And what this command does, is instead of printing to the screen, it'll print, it'll send the data to a certain IEC device. So we'll just do the device number four for the printer. And then we can I have to put a comma, and then we can just type whatever we want, like we would in a normal print statement. Now let's just press enter on the computer. And there we go. Uh, it's not the greatest quality. I have actually gotten better quality out of this printer, this, just that this ribbon isn't in the greatest shape in this few places. Okay, so I've got it set to print a basic program here, and uh, I'll just let you sit and watch this printer in action. Very loud, as I said in my yesterday short.
there we go. So the printout did get a bit rough there when it got to sort of a bad section of the ribbon. I'm gonna see if I can get a fresh ribbon for this thing. But uh, as you can see, the quality is very good, a lot better than uh, some other uh, dot matrix printers I've seen. Although definitely a better ribbon would help. But yeah, pretty good quality printer. Even though it did have better text quality than a dot matrix, it obviously was limited to just text characters of a single size. In the 1980s, if you wanted a printer that would just print high quality text and you didn't really care about graphics, uh, this would be the printer for you. Obviously, daisy wheel printers have long since been made obsolete, mainly by laser printers. This style of printer was basically just a souped up typewriter. Something that I should mention is that this printer does not support full Petsky graphics characters. So if I go to like print a character that requires you to press shift and then a key, it'll actually print the lowercase letter that corresponds with that key, in this case A. If I try to print one of the graphics characters that requires you to press the Commodore key to type, it'll just print nothing.